Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host Vaughn Troidy and I am Steampunk Desperado. Today we're going to be talking about another important aspect of steampunk and that is crafts. Make your own steampunk related gizmos. And that is another important aspect just like costuming and just like the steampunk fiction of course. Now steampunk costuming involves a lot of hats. And as far as the rest of the stuff, it's easy to put away. It's easy to hang up. But hats, we modern Americans don't have a lot of places to put them. So I developed this idea in my head to put these pipes together to make a hat tree. And uh, here's a little bit of a show. I have some footage of my assembly of this thing, which I will show you more of how I did this. Today we're going to be working on an invention of mine, a steampunk hat rack. Now you may have seen steampunk furniture out there on the internet, and it almost all seems to be made out of industrial type piping with uh, screw, basically the threaded pipes and the big heavy duty like galvanized steel I believe it is. and looks very sturdy and kind of ugly as a matter of fact. It would be very cool if we could get more of this stuff that was brass, but actually brass and copper piping is quite expensive and I'm sure that the galvanized steel is expensive enough. Now what I want to do is create a steampunk hat rack because we have lots and lots of hats in our spare room, our guest room, where it's been, it's been baking, basically taken over by Mrs. Desperado's crafts, piles and piles of gears and paints and and so on. And those, but the biggest problem was hats. We had tons of hats for our steampunk type type endeavors. So I'm going to take it the easy way out and, and let's, let's call this one a prototype. It's a prototype because we're going to create it out of PVC. A very non-steampunk material. A material that's easily cut with very many different different uh, types of fittings that you can use that are, that are relatively inexpensive. So I'm going to show you in just a moment, I'm going to lay out the parts that I have that I've already, already cut the pipes to length and I've acquired all the, all the different fittings that I need. Here's the assortment of different fittings for the making of this steampunk hat rack. And as you can see, we've got a lot of these PVC things. I had a lot of spare ones because I do work on sprinklers and pool pool piping and I thought well, I've got half of them here but as it turns out it's always this way. You look at it and you really had a lot less than you thought. So you end up buying $30 worth of fittings and piping. That's okay. It's a lot cheaper than the $80 one you would get from Amazon and that $80 one will probably accommodate like four hats. For mine is going to be at least eight, at least at the very least eight hats. So what I've done, I've already cut these pieces and one of the problems is, as you can see, some of them have a little bit extra extra um, roughness on here. I have to use this file. There's a file sitting over there make sure that we can get these together smoothly. So what we've got here, we're going to start with the base. And the base I've decided to make it in the shape of an H. <clears throat> because it would be nice if you could find a fitting that had four pipes extending from here and a pipe on top. But they don't seem to exist. And for a good reason, because I don't think that would work very well. So what we, what we do is an H. What we've got here, I've already put these pieces together. These are about what about five inches or so? And so you take these like this, and we're going to put here, this here, and this here. So that's part of the H. And then, now here's a right angle, and notice it's got, notice it's got the plug on the end. And the reason we have to plug this up is because one thing a lot of people don't think about with furniture of any sort is weight and uh, stability. You want this thing to not tip over too easily. And these hats, hats can be kind of heavy. So this pipe is light, so what we're going to do here, since PVC is light, we're going to put sand in it. 
So therefore, we have to make sure that the pipe is sealed. It's not as bad as water. We're not going to have to worry about you know, the water uh, seeping out. But we are going to have to worry about the sand coming out. So we're going to have to put a plug in each one. What we're going to do here is we have, like this, be nice legs here. So I'm going to just put this together as a trial. Just double check how it looks before I, you know, slap these together because then it's permanent. And if I want to change it, I'm going to have to buy new fittings and they were already kind of expensive. So what we're going to do is here, put these, each of these in here and like I said, I've cut them all to approximately the same length. So it's going to be a little tricky because sometimes they go a little further in, sometimes they don't. As you can see, the uh, they're a pretty tight fit, which is why we use a thing called primer. <coughs> primer is kind of a scary looking, sometimes it's purple, and primer stains the pipe. Doesn't matter. The reason it doesn't matter is because we have this. And the essential for steampunk is we're going to be able to fake it. We're going to be able to say that it's metal when it's not. So it'll look like metal if it's not. And one thing I decided to do with a little bling is to put this, it's basically a cabinet knob, we're going to put this on top. I think, I think we want the shorter one, but what we need to do is push it through here. I've already put a hole in this particular plug, end plug. It's going to go on the very top. And what I'm going to do here is put this very cool little cabinet thing in here. But anyway, this is going to be the top. And it's going to look kind of classy. A little bit off center, but nobody's going to be able to tell from across the room. <laughs> Make it look handmade, right? So, I'm going to uh, pause the video for a while and I'm going to build this I'm going to build this piece, put this piece together. I'm going to fasten everything together, try and see if I can make sure that it's about the right size that I wanted to make it. Yeah, it's about right. It'll fit in the corner of my guest room where all the cosplay steampunk stuff is. And we're going to glue this together and then we're going to go with the rest of the hat rack, which includes this piece here that what I'm going to do I'm going to just put this together now and just see if this looks right and I'm going to pull everything apart and prime and glue it before I paint it here's the first cut it's very very tall it's it's like it's going to go up to the ceiling it's like seven feet tall that's we really don't need it that tall so uh, probably about six feet would be plenty So I've determined that this is a little too tall, and what I'm going to do now is use the hacksaw, cut two inches from each of those middle pieces, and that will give me a better, a better height. It's always kind of hard to picture. I draw a little diagram when I do this, but you don't always see seeing the mind's eye isn't always the same as what you get. So I'm going to take these four pieces and then I will assemble the base so it's sturdy and isn't tipping over and falling in the pool. And I will play with the middle sections once again. And as you see, I've got a level because I realized that it would be easy to have the centerpiece not not sitting correctly. Even this table. See how crooked this table is? Now here's what we got so far. We got the base and the H size base, like I told you. And we go up like here, this way. Now, I've used a, a level to try and ensure that this is vertical. It's not easy to get it to stay because it slips while it's drying. So we'll see. It may not be perfect. And we have, so far we have some side, some horizontals at 45 degree angles, see? The next thing we're going to do though is we're going to put a little weight in the base and we're going to do that by taking some sand. We're going to pour some sand in there with a funnel 
and fill that thing up. Notice how we've got a screw fitting on the vertical pole. So that should allow us to, we can take that out, we can fill it with sand and we can put it back. We don't really need any sand in the middle part. So we're going to, we're going to have a sturdy base because that's one of the problems. Things fall over if you don't have the proper balance. So that's, a, that's an important thing of any kind of furniture. Behold the finished product. It's all assembled and painted gold. It's interesting to note that the can of spray paint pretty much lasted just for this. And I've got some stuff at the bottom that isn't quite sprayed. You can notice I took off the knob, got a little duck, the little uh, masking tape on there, so I can put it back on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I'm probably going to have to find some gold paint in Mrs. Desperado's stash and see if I can get get the bottom painted up. Otherwise. I'd have to buy another can of spray paint and that would be kind of a waste. So there it is, the, uh, the steampunk hat rack. Not yet dry, so I can't put any hats on it. I will show it to you in a, in a little, little while when it is dry. Here is the finished product with hats on it. And as you can see, by the amount of stuff in this room, that there was a desperate need to have something to put all those hats on. And right now we have exactly nine hats hanging on this thing with the eight side arms. And you can see the pith helmets and the cowboy hat and the top hat and so on. And there's a top hat on the very top. And there you have it, the steampunk hat rack. It all worked out pretty well. It, it really did. And if I had it to do over again, I might make the pipe on the bottom a little bit bigger, a little bit more sturdy. I would probably order the pieces in bulk because <laughs> it costs about thirty to forty dollars to put to get them all. The biggest issue with PVC is this, this lack of weight, its lightness, and its flexibility, which for furniture is a bad thing. Two thoughts about that: one, I filled the bottom with sand. It's a hollow pipe, of course. You can fill it with sand. I would have made the pipes bigger had I thought about it. Would have made the bottom a little heavier and I make it a little bit sturdier. Second was the middle part was bending and I hadn't thought about that. I tried sticking a wooden dowel up the middle. That didn't work, wasn't, wasn't sturdy enough. But I did so happen to have some metal rebar in my tool shed and that worked just fine, just barely fit into that half inch pipe. It makes it very sturdy and a little bit heavy. So that was how I made this very smart, I think, this very attractive and uh, useful hat, that hat rack that accommodates nine hats. So, in any case, for now, my hat problem is solved. Feel free to use, use my ideas to copy it, make your own steampunk hat rack. Maybe you want to make it out of the galvanized pipe. I'm going to throw together some instructions and uh, feel free and shoot me an email and I'll send you a copy. So this has been my steampunk hat rack episode of the Steampunk Desperado channel. Please comment below, tell me what you thought about it, tell me what other things you'd like to see. Please like and subscribe, it helps us get the word out and promote this channel. For now, this is Vaughn Troy to Steampunk Desperado saying thank you kindly for being, being with us. And adios from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.